Hello there again. This recording is meant to walk you through some of the key components of Excel Module 1 as you'll be getting into spreadsheets. And the first thing I'd like to chat about here uh, real quickly is applications of Excel and spreadsheets in agriculture. As we pivot from access, which you would put a lot of information in and then be able to spit information out. Uh, one of the things that Excel then does differently than Access, because there's some similar features in both of them, is Excel does the job that Access does not in terms of analyzing and uh, compiling data uh, that you may use for reporting, uh, looking at trends, uh, calculating totals, um, averages excel and spreadsheets do a lot better job of that than does access access simply put information out and put information in and then you can pull reports out based on that those uh those reporting features that you ask for doesn't really do a very good job of doing analysis on data and that's where spreadsheets come into play so in terms of applications in agriculture you know, I would encourage you to think about using this as a tool for, let's say, putting in a budget um, and, and doing analysis on that, maybe tracking um, a, a, a test plot that you've got out there, uh, maybe tracking production on, on groups of steers or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of really good applications in agriculture that you can do with spreadsheets, and they're very simple to do. Uh, Excel is quite different than Access in that it's very, very easy to use, and there are a lot of ways to do, do different things. So as we work through some of the key examples here in, Word, in Excel Module 1, is uh, you'll see in your textbook uh, it has an image of a requirements document and that's a good place to start because you can sit down and jot some notes on what you want your Excel spreadsheet to look like. What is the, What are the key columns and row headers? Uh, what information needs to be in there? What formulas might you need? Uh, and then maybe what charting features you might need to be looking at using when you get to the end product. Also we need to chat about uh, the difference between a worksheet and a workbook. So down at the bottom here you notice the different tabs. I've got this particular one labeled 2019. Uh, I've got three fields set up here where I have some bushels that I harvested off of just as an example. And then you've got subsequent sheets that are labeled here also and if I click through those you'll see some differences in terms of you know just empty spreadsheets there. Each of these is a worksheet and then the entire file, the collection of worksheets, is what we call a workbook. And I point that out for a very specific reason, and I'm as guilty of it as anyone, is we go to design a, a spreadsheet for a certain purpose, and we take all the time to set it up and put it together, put the data in, do the analysis, and then maybe subsequent year, uh, for example, I could come back in 2020 and have to do this very same thing, and we start a brand new file, a brand new workbook, and put the information in again. And there's really no need for that. If you have data that you will be analyzing the same year over year, month over month, day over day, whatever it may be, is you can simply create additional worksheets within that workbook. And they're all tied together so that you can do analysis between each worksheet as well. So the collection of worksheets uh, resides in the workbook, which is the file. So you don't have to then chase a whole bunch of different files uh, in your filing system. All right, getting to the specifics here. Uh, you'll notice that the ribbon looks very, very similar. Many of the same features up here in terms of the tabs. Obviously, one of the new ones then is the formulas tab uh, that, that uh, gives you the opportunity to put formulas in and so on and so forth. And we'll get to that here in a little bit. One of the things that I want to draw your attention to is uh, there are two types of information that you're going to put into Excel, and based upon what you put in, Excel sees it differently. So anytime there's a letter included in the input in the cell, it's going to see that as text. So you see I have field 1 through 5 here on the left. Uh, Excel sees that as text, and so by default it will left justify those. Anytime that you have a pure number in, Excel is going to see that as data, and it's going to right justify those. Anything that is coded data in Excel or as input as data can be calculated, uh, can be used in a formula or a function. Anything that is coded or input as text cannot be calculated in Excel. So it's uh, critical to remember the differences. 
as you get into these, make sure that you understand which information should be in row headers like this and which information should be in column headers like this. So as you're designing your own work sheet occasionally you're going to run into that where you put them in the wrong side and you'll have to change them okay so getting into a few more of the features here so i have my my um, bushels total of each of the fields that i put in here and i can come down to uh, this particular total column down here i'm going to put in a header here uh, total bushels uh, a row header there at the bottom and I come up to the top right hand corner here in the ribbon on the home tab and I can click this auto sum button that's going to automatically put in a sum formula function in there for me now automatically uh, by default in Excel when you put in one of those functions it's going to automatically look above and then it will look to the left so it's key to understand this is the range and that range is a critical term uh, this range of cells is what we're, what we're calculating on here so one of the problems that you'll run into occasionally is you'll put in a formula or a function and not be calculating the proper range so that is that is key to remember is you know whenever you're you're calculating a range make sure that your range is correct so if i click that sum and hit enter then it's going to give me a sum total of the bushels that I have there by uh, by just putting that in and then anytime I happen to change any of these so let's say I put this one in wrong instead of 5650 it was actually 6550 it will then automatically update as you notice there that total at the bottom one of the things that I will encourage you is it is key to remember that utilize the tools in Excel and one of the main tools is the calculations feature that it will auto do the calculations now I fully know that you can highlight this range down here in the bottom in the status bar it will tell you the sum would be 385 acres harvested there and you could go in and type 385 acres okay and that would be the correct answer however I am looking and grading you specifically on did you actually use a function use a formula use a calculation anytime that you could so let me show you an example here let's say for example this hundred acres was wrong it's supposed to be 110 acres well now we have to remember that we have to come down here and key in a 395 if you do the sum feature it's going to auto calculate that for you that's what I'm looking for in Excel and so as I grade these I'll show you here all one of the things that I do critical in terms of grading is I will open your file I will look at how it's formatted and look and see if you have the correct data and then all I do is come up here and click this show formulas number or show formulas button and check to see if you have formulas everywhere that you're supposed to so one of my huge pet peeves in this section is for you to go in and key in answers where there should be formulas and so I encourage you not to do that uh, because I will count off for that there's a special special section now special row in your new grading rubric for Excel that talks about using and grade specifically on using formulas functions and calculations let's look at each of these uh, another feature in terms of Excel so I've uh, clicked on uh, uh, cell G5 here that's the average bushel per field and I've got a calculation obviously set up here in the formula bar of E5 minus F5 and if I double click on this one it'll highlight those uh, cells let me Excel uh, ex escape out of that so notice your mouse uh, always has a big plus sign here that's the default feature um, that is your cell selector or your range selector so I can select that range of cells there uh, or I can put my farm uh, name up here at the top and maybe I want to center that across these I can highlight that range and then come up here and hit merge and center and it will center that for me so anytime I need to select a range of cells use the big plus sign if I'm wanting to move something so I click on this cell maybe this total I would like to move to a different spot okay I get the four-way arrow whenever I hover on the exterior of the cell and I can click hold and drag and move that cell contents anywhere that I like on the worksheet maybe it's down here maybe I want to move it back to where it was supposed to be there you go so that four-way pointer arrow will give you that option 
A really cool tool, if I come back to the average here, is what we call the fill handle. And I will encourage you to use this as often as possible. So if you notice, I'll hover over this bottom right-hand corner of the cell and I'll get the small plus sign. That's called the fill handle. So you will left click, hold, and drag that down. And I will fill in then that formula, remember, that I showed you in each of those cells. Voila, very simple like that. Very, very easy feature in Excel. So notice it has relative reference. It has changed the formula automatically for you in each of those cells. So it's referencing the correct one. So that's the fill handle. Uh, here I just have I just have a number in there. Let's say I want to copy that number down to each of those. It will do that automatically then. It will copy that cell. Okay. And then I can go ahead and fill this one in as well. And so there I have my total for each of those fields total revenue. Now when you get something like this, where you get the pound signs or the hashtags across that area, it's a good time for me to show you. If you come up here in the column header, we can highlight that column and we could maybe do something with it in terms of formatting. We could delete it or whatever. Also, if you hover over the column dividers, we can left click, hold and drag and change the width of that column. However we like, if we drag it to the left, all these mean is your column is not wide enough. So you can click again, click, hold and drag uh, to widen that column out or simple double click and it will size it to the longest one in the column. The same thing happens on the row dividers over here. If you need to change the row divider height, uh, you can double click or left click, hold and drag on those in order to change those. That's really crucial and a very, very easy tool. So beside, besides the fill handle, um, let me give you another example here. Let's say we were doing a monthly budget and I put January in here. I can left click my fill holder, uh, fill handle, drag that across and it will automatically know to put the months in. Maybe I want to do by day. And so I put January 1 and I want to drag that down and it will automatically calculate one, but I could also fill the series in and it will automatically put the numbers in there. So some very easy features using the fill handle. I will encourage you to utilize that, maximize it uh, to the best of your ability all the time. Then lastly, uh, for today, we'll talk about charting. So let's say I wanted to chart the bushels by field. So all that I need to do is highlight the proper range. Go up here to the tab and hit insert. And you'll have all of these charts in the chart gallery, chart options in the chart gallery here. And so let's say maybe I wanted to do just simple bar graph uh, on the charts. I click that option and I pick which one that I want. And let's say this simple 2D uh, bar graph is all that I wanted to do. And it will pop up uh, based upon the range that you've highlighted. Here's your bar graph. Now I will encourage you, uh, this is what we call an embedded chart. I will encourage you to think about where that chart should best reside. If you want the chart to be reflected with the data, you want to put it on your worksheet just like this. This is called an embedded chart. If you want that chart to reside outside of the data and sit in on its own page, then you will move that chart to a new location, a separate page. Um, when we talk about charting, I think it's critical to understand that the type of chart that you choose often tells a different story on the data that you're reflecting and reporting upon. So uh, kind of your final message of this particular section is I would think very carefully about what type of chart that I want to put out there. Uh, do I do I need a bar graph to reflect um, my data? Do I need a pie chart? Uh, that shows a proportion of the whole? Do I need a line graph that suggests a trend over time? So think about your charting options carefully. But I'll wrap it up here in suggesting that uh, this transition from Access to Excel should be pretty easy. Uh, you kind of go back to having lots of freedom in how to navigate through the, through the assignments. And, and there are many, many different ways to do different things in Excel. Make sure that you save things because now you go back to Excel doesn't auto save th things. So I will go ahead and save this up here at the top. And if you have an, any questions or run into troubles, as always, uh, feel free to stop by my office during office hours. I'd be glad to help you. Have a great day.